I want to share with you a recent lesson that I gave to Joe. Joe actually works for me, he's holding the camera at the moment. Um, so we'd finished filming, we went to Moshudo, uh, Joe said he was hitting a couple of shots left, and I said, do you know what, let's just have a look at your golf swing and give you a bit of a lesson. So we jumped into the studio, we, we took some data on, on full swing, we saw it, he was swinging across the golf ball to the left, that's where his left shot was coming from. So I'm going to show you the three stage process we went through, kept it really simple, and within, I'm going to say 20 minutes, he was swinging the club much, much better, hitting much straighter shots. So it all started with, you know, me asking Joe kind of what he was trying to do in his golf swing. And he explained to me that he was trying to get his weight forward with his irons, felt that was going to help him with strike, um, but he didn't really know why the ball was, was going to the left. So when we looked at his golf swing, the first thing I noticed with Joe is that he was basically working his body rotation too early in the golf swing. So you'll see there that he had all of his rotation happening really before the club and the hands had reached kind of shoulder height. Now what that was doing as we looked from this face view is it meant that he was actually tipping towards the target. Now what that did is that had an effect on what his arms did and ultimately had an effect on his downswing shape. The key thing with this lesson, and this is what I really want to share with you today, is Joe's club path wasn't where it needed to be. We changed that in 20 minutes. And at not one point in the lesson did we mention the golf club. And that's so powerful because yes, your golf club is ultimately what you're trying to change. But very often what you do with your body is what's influencing that golf club. If you move your body better, guess what? The golf club moves around your body better and you start to get better results. So there was no focus on the club. So what I really wanted to do with Joe was get him actually loading a bit more into his trail side and actually change what I call the rate of rotation. Because when we look from down the line, his rotation wasn't wrong. It was just too early. And you can see just how much daylight I've got between my legs. Now, the little sort of feeling I had was to, I kind of got Joe to visualize Rory back row with a driver. Okay, I know he had an iron and we're looking at Rory with a driver, but what does Rory do with a driver? When he starts his golf and he has a little, almost like a little bump across. And what I kind of said to Joe was, if he can feel a little bit of that, if he's trying to move in sort of this direction to move the club away, he's probably not going to be moving in this direction. So we tried to sort of change that movement and add in a different one. So <clears throat> the instruction was, let's see if we can get a little bit of a bump. And as you do that, feel like your legs are a little bit quieter. And straight away, we started to see a much more loaded top of the back swing position with better sync in terms of his rotation, married up with his arms and he started to keep his head a lot more centered. And for me, that was the starting point. I had to do that because so much of what he did in his downswing was just a result of that movement. If you get that wrong, it's incredibly difficult to recover from that. Now, there's also a second reason why I wanted to do this. When we looked at Joe's swing from face on, his arms relative to his torso were really nicely structured here. But as he got to the top, his arms just kept going and kept going and kept going and kept going and kept going. His arm swing was too long. And when we look from this down the line view, we saw his right arm start to get really, really narrow. Now, the question I was asked myself as a coach is, why is this happening? There's always a reason. Now, go back to what we just said with his body rotation. What was happening is he was over-rotating his body early. His body rotation had almost finished by this point. So his arms were just swinging freely. There was nothing to tell them when to stop or to stop. They were just kind of swinging on their own and they didn't really know when to stop. He was getting very, very out of sync in his backswing. So what I really wanted him to do was use this little movement that we discussed away from the ball, trying to feel that little bump, slow the rotation down and have the feeling that when his shoulders stopped turning, his arms stopped swinging. He was getting everything more married up. Everything was talking to each other a little bit better. It was more synced up. So that would look a little bit like this. We get this little bump away. The rotation is reduced or slowed down. And as his shoulders stopped, the arm stopped. We were getting him much more structured in his arm position. And within a couple of swings and a couple of ideas, we'd suddenly taken this sort of backswing where it was tipping towards the target, arms were going really long, to suddenly something that looked a lot more in sync and a lot more under control. That was the first thing. So I'd love you to go ahead and take a look at your golfing. Have a look at your rotation. Have a look at what your head's doing for that face on and see whether there's anything there that can kind of help you because there'll be so many of you who are struggling with the same things that Joe was struggling with. And it then came on to the final point. 
we had essentially primed his backswing much better. He was in a far better place to actually hit some better shots. The final thing that we wanted him to do, and this became much easier because of what we did in the backswing, in his downswing, because of everything he'd done, because he'd gone this way and this way, and his arms had gone long, his arms were too far across his body. As he rotated, his downswing was always going to be incredibly steep. And when it's incredibly steep, we get this path going left. So his arms were, I called it, pinned to his chest for too long. So as he got back here, they went too far, but they stayed pinned for too long. He was swinging his arms too late. So the final bit that I gave him was just allow the arms to swing. Now, how many of you over the, uh, over the years have been told, take the hands out of it. You should be using your body. The arms should be going along for the ride. It's often not the case. It's often going to be detrimental to you. It's often going to cause those paths. So when we got him to the top, I said to him, just allow the arms to swing. Just put some speed in the hands of the arms. Allow them to go from over your right shoulder to over your left shoulder. Feel that there's some arms swing. Feel that there's some speed there. Feel like you're getting these arms and the club to swing rather than holding them back and them being delivered far too late. Now I've got the full swing down here. When we did this with Joe, I say 20 minutes, we suddenly changed path. You'll see on the screen, the path was starting to get very straight. A couple even out to the right, he was hitting some beautiful draws. And so we can demonstrate that now for you. So this is the little exercise we gave him. Bump, shoulder stop, arm stop, swing the arms. And we get this nice draw that's gonna land short because it wasn't full speed. But let me show you what my path was. My path was 1.7 degrees out to the right easy whereas what we did before was causing all those issues now obviously at some point we wanted to blend it all together and make it a little bit more free-flowing but it was those real key messages that we gave joe to really change the shape of his dancing so what is what is the message here well the message here is if you want to play better golf you've got to change what this is doing you have to change how the club is delivered to the ball but don't always obsess around this because if you obsess around the club you start to be that golfer who positions the club get your body moving well. Everything we did with Joe was about getting his body to move better, getting to be more in sync, and actually just giving him some freedom through the ball so he could feel like he could apply some speed with the hands, and he started to hit the ball much, much better. Now, is it gonna be an instant fix? Of course not. He's gonna have to go and practice it. He's gonna have to put the work in. He's gonna have to go and look at the ball flight on the range and make sure he's doing the right things and do a few drills, but he's now got the tools. He added those tools in. He saw the change of the ball flight. He's got everything he needs now to go and play some better golf. You've got to do the work, Joe. Hope that helps you uh, if you're struggling with those issues, which many of you will be.